happy here and now. My apologies if I ruined the moment for to you uh, with today's story, but I promise I will turn it around to the positive lately in this same episode. Almost 14 years ago, as a family, we decided to emigrate from Venezuela to the United States. The move will only include my husband, children, and me, since our mothers, siblings, and other relatives stay behind. One of the main reasons for this migration was the U.S. economic stability, especially the low inflation compared with Latin America, of course, where my husband and I lived and worked. You must live there <laughs> to know that is possible. I remember a trip to Brazil in the late 80s, maybe, or early 90s, where when the Crucero was, was still the, the currency, we were advised to exchange our dollars early in the morning and only at the company offices to obtain a fair rate and go buy lunch early before prices rise. Lately, in the 90s, perhaps, And this time I went to Buenos Aires. In the morning, when I walked uh, from the hotel to the office, I saw a beautiful pair of leather shoes. And I saw those were perfect to Jose, to my husband, you know, as a gift. The store was closed at that time. I took note of the price. And later, later that day, when I went to buy the, those shoes, the price in the local currency was double, but fortunately the same or almost the same in U.S. dollars. <laughs> Then in Venezuela, after all the economic and political changes introduced in the early uh, 2000s, we start to face the same level of hyperinflation, but on the regular everyday expenses such as food, toiletries, and public services. In contrast, for all those decades, uh, up to maybe 2020, 2010, prices in the U.S. were quite stable. Inflation was around 2 or 3% yearly, something reasonable, you know. Therefore, we concluded that when we emigrate to the U.S., we will enjoy such a stability. <laughs> well, what a childish idea. Nowadays, we are living in the U.S., a comparable situation in, to Latin America, where prices rose uncontrollably due to inflation. And this inflation is born uh, in a vicious uh, cycle. Cost go, goes up, prices go up, the salaries need to be increased to catch up with the higher cost of living, resulting in an increase in cost that increases prices and the cycle repeats itself. Uh, and this is the inflationary uh, effect that we feel. But what is the cost? In a very easy To understand why, because I'm not an economist or a financial advisor, inflation causes are diverse and complex. We, as individuals and business owners, experiment with these effects, but inflation can start, for instance, with government subsidizes, subsidizing uh, very specific uh, economic activities, offering too many social programs, increase taxes to increase public sector employees or bureaucracy. Well, all these actions that mimics or uh, actions of those uh, socialist governments, by the way, and that we frequently saw in Latin America were unthinkable in the market economy by excellence, the capitalist U.S., We start to see these actions during 2020 based on the economic effects caused by COVID. My point here is that all those uh, four years of 
socialist actions were facing the results. Inflation, higher prices, the increased uh, cost of uh, goods and service productions, salaries that we must improve because otherwise we are lose uh, skillful employees. Uh, of course, if we are business people or we do need to reduce our quality of life if we are individuals or just employees. What do you think we should do? Fortunately, in Latin America, we also learn what to do. <laughs> Today, we are going to recap on what to do for those who are immigrants for, from Latin America, and we will share these suggestions with our own Anglo and second generation um, uh, audiences because probably they don't remember what to do. What to do to cope with inflation? Number one is expenses control. Whether in your company or at home, start by reviewing your budget. I assume you have one. Or if you don't, uh, look for my YouTube video on the subject so you can find out how to create one. So check what is the expendable. That is, I can take this to zero, subscriptions to audiobooks, one that you didn't remember that you have because you never use it. It could be something else. Of course, this is a, just an example. Then what can I reduce? Generally, considerable amounts are food, especially if you eat out a lot. Check, try to reduce. It's not that you are not going to buy food or that you are going to totally cut your audience to a restaurant, even to McDonald's or your favorite food truck. It's not about punishing you or your family. It's just to uh, reduce, adjust to the new reality. From $1.500 for months, for instance, cut to $1.400. That's a 20% adjustment, and $1.100 that can help you for other necessary expenses like rent, utilities, gas, etc. So, number two, reduce costs. Starting with the highest, you are reviewing and thinking uh, about what measurements you can take to reduce. In addition to stopping using th something, it least <laughs> you can consider a uh, change providers, for instance, change uh, or look for a new place to do your shopping. Another measure can be uh, take advantage of discounts. Notice what days usually those sales are made um, where you buy the, your items. For example, in food. The supermarket where I typically go offers buy one, get one free on Thursdays and in a bulk sales warehouse where before it would never before uh, occur to me to go shopping, if I buy six units of cans, they cost me what four worth in the supermarket. So I bought all six uh, cans and stored it in the pantry or in the gar garage or anywhere. Another tip, January, they always lower the price of sheets and uh, towels, as well as, uh, as Christmas decorations. At the beginning of March, they stock all the spring season clothes, so warm clothing sells at great. That, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, in the South, they go from summer to autumn, so it's the perfect time to buy a bathing suit to wear on the coming uh, summer, uh, southern summer, or if you can take a little escape to the Caribbean between May and September. Number three, create a reserve fund. This is th probably the most challenging, challenging uh, anti-inflation measurement because the idea is not to place the money in a savings account necessarily. Overall, banks pay shallow interests. Instead, 
I prefer to place the money on other instruments, less liquid, that is, that the money is not immediately available, but they pay a little better. Mutual funds, terms, or certificates of deposit, even a retirement account if you are at the age when you can access those funds if you need it. But the truth, you will not believe me, but I prefer to have a small amounts saved in cash like the grannies. <laughs> An amount that allows you to, let's say, manage uh, basic expenses for at least one or two months in cash. Bare basics that include food, rent, water, gasoline, electricity, and of course, internet connection. And the rest, you can put it in the, in the saving instrument of your choice. Ideally, say the experts, it is to have this fund with enough money for six months. I must confess that li liquid, I probably <laughs> just get up to four months. Thanks God, I have never had um, the need to use it. Another thing that we can learn, or you, we learn from Latin America during inflation time is, it would be recommendation number four, is get out of debt or, or avoid getting into debt. In inflation, interest rises. Therefore, borrowing is more expensive. And although in the short term, you may be solving a problem, it, you create a new one for the long term. Uh, which is pay more money for your current purchases. These four ideas, cost control, reduction of uh, amounts, savings, and avoid uh, getting into debt, apply both in a personal and in a business level. But also, if you are a businesswoman, it would be best if you take additional actions. The first has to do with create, clearly communicate value. Customers seek lower prices, but really what they are looking for is excellent value for their money. Therefore, you must strive to offer quality, highlight the attributes of your product or services, the benefits that the buyer or potential client will get. When a, per when a person makes a purchase decision, there are four factors that they take into account. Price, experience, um, value, and after-sales services. Therefore, the price is only one criteria that can always be avoided as an obstacle to closing the sales, whether the process, the Sorry, the product offers excellent value to the customer or to, to, to the consumer. Analyzing these four criteria to achieve conversions or sales, our second idea for entrepreneurs appears. Optimize the shopping experience for the customer. Today, people expect to be able to buy something with equal ease, whether in a physical store, online, on a mobile, or a computer, by phone, using a delivery service, or just purchase, uh, withdraw, or pick up. Companies, large and small, should review all those uh, customer journey routes and make it easier for the, cost, for the customer to use them. Uh, that the experience is consistent between those channels. In this way, you will not only achieve sales, otherwise you also will learn customer loyalty, something that I will never tire to say, reduce your sales cost and is, trans is transform through reviews in the best, more effective and cheaper publicity for a business. Those are suggestions to survive inflation in 2023 both as an individual and at, in a personal level. Like in your business, uh, you can do this. Remember that there is no magic recipe, that each, each uh, situation has different or distinct characteristics, so you may need to review your options for your business in, or in the case of your company. 
and we can help you do that. Please write me uh, to info at jasalva.com. Contact details are in the descriptions below.